go. Okay, welcome everyone to today's two o'clock commissioner consent agenda meeting. Um, let the record reflect that is 2.05. We are starting just a little late. Um, apologize for that, but there's lots going on today. So want to make sure we've got the agenda right for all my public hearings that I have. Um, so I do want to start off, let the rec record reflect that we have all three commissioners here today. Um, and that uh, we do have several public hearings that are going to be happening. So if anyone wants to testify on any of those, um, the yellow form and Gina, our clerk of the board, has those forms over there. I do have some people that have already signed up. So appreciate that. And then we will be during each of them. Uh, it is star nine to unmute if you're on the phone or raise your hand if you are on Zoom. So that way we can make sure that we get you identified and give you the opportunity to, to testify. So I do want to start off saying that we did not receive any public comment on items on the consent agenda, written public comment. Um, and so we will start then with our open public forum. So that is for anything that is not on today's agenda. Someone who just wants to talk about something other than what's on today's agenda um, is what the open public forum is for. So I am going to open that now and see if anyone wants to come and testify on, on at the open public forum for any items not on today's agenda. I would like to testify. Okay, come on down and then we'll need to start off by just saying your name um, and address for the record and then fill out the yellow form when you're done. And you have three minutes. So everyone's got three minutes. We'll have the timer up on the board. And we'll go ahead and uh, if you just want to state your name and address for the record and then it'll start the three minutes. Um, my name is Brandon Ward. Uh, my address is 18814 West Burnett. Um, I was here on... 719 at the commissioner's meeting uh trying to get uh get something done about the continued commercial use uh going on next door to me i mean there's been uh some uh, erroneous permits issued uh with erroneous facts which invalidate them which were supported and have been it's been going on for five years now uh i've sent continued pictures of commercial use on 626 uh seven Five, seven, fourteen, seven, sixteen, um, eight, ten, nine, thirteen. Oh, let's see, there's a couple more here. Seven, eighteen, and seven, thirty-one. So we've had all these violations since he did the stipulated agreement in district court. Um, I've asked for updates if that agreement is going to be nullified and they're going to move forward with prosecution. I've heard nothing. Uh, continued commercial use as of today. I've sent in another email. There are loading up their commercial vehicle with commercial equipment uh, quite clearly in the photos. Obviously, they're not going to follow through on the uh, negotiated agreement that they did with the district court. So what are we doing? Uh, I also understood that they were going to move forward with uh, the SEBA violations because uh, there was no grading permit, no SEBA per permit ever granted, and all that toxic soils still sitting there. Um, can I ask who you have sent those emails to? I have been sending them to Scott Chesney, uh, Gabriel, the investigator, can't remember his last name at the moment. Uh, and I've also been sending them to, um, let me look right here, um, James Moore in general is my contact. Okay, those are the right people to send them to. Um, Mr. McLean? Can you tell me the person's name that you're raising the complaints about who uh this is uh don bailey bailey construction i'll have to get back to you on it I'll, I'll reach out to matt Koza. he's on that okay and uh are we doing anything with the sepa agreements has there been any violations any paperwork anything done um i think we'll have uh ask matt Koza to get back to you on that as well okay yeah. and then an expected timeline would be great <laughs> i've been waiting for a month and a half two months this time yeah, no, I don't blame you. So uh, we will follow up with that. We'll make sure that, um, I mean, we'll confer with the two gentlemen there at the end to make sure that we get back to you, I would say, okay. within two weeks. Okay, okay. thank and you. If, if not, then please email us commissioners and we'll make sure that that happens. Okay, I'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, second call for anyone wishing to testify. I think I just did the first call. So second call for anyone wishing to testify on the open public forum. Seeing no one online. Okay, third and final call. 
Seeing no one else, then I will close the open public forum and I will look to my fellow commissioners for item number two on today's agenda. Madam Chair, I would move that we approve uh, consent agenda items number 2A, 2B, and 2C as uh, presented on uh, uh, the agenda for today. I will second the motion. I have a motion and a second for items number 2A, B, and C on today's agenda. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. That will take us to item number three on today's agenda, which we have item number three, A, three B, and then we have a resolution number four that I believe Mr. Macio is going to give us a presentation on all three of those items, and then we'll take them each separately. Is that correct? That is absolutely correct, Madam Chair, and thank you very much. For the record, my name is Jim Amacio. I'm a special deputy prosecuting attorney assigned to the civil department of the prosecuting attorney's office. With me today, with regard to this item, we have Meg Winchester. She is the president and CEO of Visit Spokane. We also have Maureen Dodro. She is the director of finance and administration with Visit Spokane. And we may very well have Eric Sawyer, who's the president and CEO of Spokane Sports. They may be available in the event the board should have any questions as we move forward. And I've asked Mr. Valencia to put the PowerPoint up and I've given the board a copy. So if you would bear with me, I'd like to run through it. This presentation is somewhat different than the presentation I gave the board two weeks ago when you set the notice of public hearing. It has a little bit more detail, which I think will assist you in moving forward and taking some action. Uh, firstly, if we could go to the next slide, Mr. Valencia, uh, the board will recall in, in 2003, the Washington State Legislature recognized the importance of tourism promotion within the state of Washington, and they passed the Tourist Promotion Act, which is codified now in Chapter 35101 RCW. Under the Tourist Promotion Act that was passed in 2004, a city or a county at the request of lodging businesses can establish a tourism promotion area. If you establish a tourism promotion area, you can impose a daily bed charge on lodging businesses with 40 or more units located within the boundaries of the tourism promotion area. In 2005, Spokane County was the first county in the state of Washington to form a tourist promotion area. That particular tourist promotion area, however, included the city of Spokane, the city of Spokane Valley, and the unincorporated areas of Spokane County. In 2000, uh, in 2023, the, uh, the city of Spokane Valley took formal action to terminate the existing uh, tourism promotion area. So the present tourism promotion area will no longer exist as of December 31st, 2022. Next slide, please, Mr. Valencia. Thank you very much. Uh, the board, uh, the present request. Spokane County has received petitions to form a new tourist promotion area from lodging businesses located only in the city of Spokane and the unincorporated area of Spokane County. I would draw to the board's attention that there are approximately 33 lodging businesses with 40, with 40 or more units in the city of Spokane, and there's only three in the unincorporated area of Spokane County. The reason the Board of County Commissioners received the petition is that we have previously administered the present tourist promotion area and the lodging businesses felt comfortable in asking us to create a new tourism promotion area, even though we only had three lodging businesses and the city had 33. In this regard, I want you to know that I have been working very closely with Mike Piccolo, Assistant City Attorney, as we move forward to ensure the City of Spokane was comfortable with the county being the lead in forming the tourist promotion area. And Mr. Piccolo 
made the council and the mayor aware of where we were going. And they in fact are in accord. And moreover, uh, they already signed the interlocal agreement last night, assuming we take action today where they would join the tourism promotion area. The present petitions that were submitted to the Board of County Commissioners contain the signatures of lodging businesses who would pay 78.8% 78 .8 of the special assessments that are going to be spread throughout the district. And the reason this is important is because in order for the board to form a TPA, you must have the signatures of lodging businesses within the boundaries that would pay 60% of the special assessments. So uh, we have a petitions or petitions, if you will, that are signed by 78.8%. And uh, Visit Spokane, who helped collect the signatures, employed Frucci and Associates to certify the sufficiency of the signatures. And we've received a letter today from them certifying based upon certain information that we've provided to them that in fact, the petition submitted to the board on August 11th and August 31st contain the signatures of lodging businesses who would pay 78.8% of the special assessments. The petition that we received, it's critical that we understand what it asks us to do. The petitions that were submitted by these lodging businesses want the board to establish a new tourism promotion area effective January 1st, 2023. The boundaries would be the incorporated limits of the city of Spokane and only the unincorporated area of Spokane County. Visit Spokane reached out to the city of Cheney, Airway Heights, and the city of Liberty Lake, and they opted not to participate in the new tourist promotion area. We also had some dialogue with Northern Quest because they've got a huge lodging business. And by law, because they're a, a separate uh, uh, governmental entity, we can't include them without their permission. I'm advised that they are considering participating in some fashion in the event we establish a new tourism promotion area. So the petition said, please establish the new tourism promotion area with the boundaries that I've just indicated. Number two, it said, please impose a daily special assessment for people staying overnight in these lodging businesses in the same amount that we're presently paying. And they presently pay a daily red charge of a base charge plus an additional charge. And in certain zones, it's $4 per night. And in another zone, it's only a dollar per night. I'll talk about that in a minute. But the key here is the special assessments that they want to impose in the tourism promotion area, which we will establish, are no different than presently in effect. So there'd be no change for them. Number 3C, they've requested that the Board of County Commissioners form a, Sp uh, form a Spokane Hotel and Motel TPA Commission. And this commission would be smaller than the one that we presently have. The commission that they've proposed would consist of five individuals, one elected representative from the Board of County Commissioners appointed by the board, one elected representative from the city council appointed by the Spokane City Council, two individuals appointed by the city from the, who are members of the, recommended by the Hotel Motel Association who have to be owners of lodging businesses and one appointed by the city of Spokane and one individual from the appoint, excuse me, recommended by the Hotel Motel Association who owns or operates a lodging business appointed by the Board of County Commissioners. The public members, just like they are now, Mr. Kearns, are non-voting members, although they can speak. And the reason this uh, committee is important is, on an annual basis, they make a recommendation to the Board of County Commissioners on how the revenues generated within the tourist promotion area should be spent. And although they make a recommendation, the law is clear, 
The ultimate decision is that of the Board of County Commissioners. Since 2005, we've had the present TPA. To my recollection, the Board of County Commissioners has always followed the recommendation of the Hotel Motel uh, TPA Commission in conjunction with determining how to contract for the services. So next steps, if we can move, Mr. Valencia. I'm trying to move through this quickly, Madam Chair. I apologize it's taking so long. So subsequent to the receipt of the petition, which I've talked about, which contains the signatures of 78.8% of the lodging business who are gonna be paying the special assessments, the Board of County Commissioners by law is required to do three things. They have to hold two public hearings and then they have to execute an interlocal agreement with the city of Spokane. So with the permission of the board, I now wanna to go to the three public hearing items with that background in mind and tell you what the purpose is of the two public hearings and then the administrative action. Mr. Valencia, if I could go to the next slide. Okay. Uh, item number three, a board members, I call it public hearing number one. It's entitled, in the matter of adopting a resolution of intention to establish a tourism promotion area, having certain boundaries and other matters related thereto. For some reason, the legislature said, before we can officially form a tourist promotion area by an ordinance, we've got to hold a public hearing, advertise it in the newspaper, give mailed notice to all lodging businesses, i.e. over 30 units with, within the proposed area, and then let them come in and comment as to whether or not they think we should move forward and formally adopt an ordinance creating, uh, creating the, uh, the TPA. The interesting thing about this hearing under item number one, where you listen to people that want to object or support, the only way you cannot move forward is if protests are filed by 50% or a majority of those people within lodging businesses, within the tourist promotion area that are gonna pay the special assessment. And in this case, of course, that's going to be very problematic when you have 78.8% say go forward, but still we have to go through this particular public hearing. So as indicated on the lower portion of this slide, uh, board members, after considering the public testimony on this item, the board will simply determine whether or not to formally create a new tourist promotion area by ordinance. And I have prepared, because this is such a unique process, a proposed motion for the board to consider after you've taken public testimony on this particular item so we can move forward. Mr. Valencia, I'm wondering if you, if you could please pull up very quickly the notice of public hearing on the intent to form. I just want to be sure that the, um, I refresh the board's memory on what it looks like. It's pretty simple. Um, and uh, instead of uh, passing it down, I thought it would be simpler. So. Here's the notice for the first item board members. And if I could have Mr. Valencia scroll down a bit. It basically says item number one, we're going, if you scroll up just a little bit higher, uh, the, the boundaries of the tourist promotion area. Number two, how the monies that are paid in by the lodging businesses will be used. And if I go to the next page, Mr. Valencia. Number three, how much money we think we're gonna raise. It raises a lot of money, board members. It's guesstimated, depending upon the number of events in the community, that this tourist promotion area can raise between four, seven, and five, two million dollars a year. And remember, that money then, the Board of County Commissioners determines how to spend to encourage tourism promotion in the, uh, uh, the area of the TPA. And then item number four on the, uh, the uh, notice, it shows exactly what we're going to charge, if you will, lodging businesses whose boundaries are within the TPA. And item number A is all lodging businesses located within the city of Spokane. When the board establishes the TPA, they will pay, uh, they will charge $4 per room day for people staying overnight in their businesses. Item zone B is all uh, lodging businesses in the unincorporated area of Spokane County. And as I mentioned, there's only three, but they too 
will pay a total uh, charge, uh, charge, if you will, $4 per day. Zone, I've mean, got to go back to, if I could, zone A. Zone A and B apply to only lodging businesses whose in gross income for room rentals was more than $500,000 in the previous year. And Department of Revenue has that information so they know uh, what they should be charging. Zone C and D relate to lodging businesses located in those particular categories whose, whose income from room rentals is less than, less than $500,000. And as you'll see uh, under zone C, if you're in the city of Spokane or the unincorporated area and your gross income from room rentals is less than a half million dollars a year, you only charge a dollar per day to people staying overnight instead of the $4 a day. Why is this language important? Remember, to form a tourist promotion area, the lodging business initiated, they tell us what they would like us to impose as a special assessment. So item number one is simply to take public testimony on the notice of intent and then in this particular case, I, I can't imagine you not making motion except to move forward to adopt the notice of intent and to move forward to the next item. Okay, the next item, I'm almost through, sorry. Public hearing number two, Mr. Valencia, if I could. Okay, this one's an easy one. Again, the legislature said, okay, cities and counties, if you approve a notice of intent to establish a tourism promotion area, the next step is you have to adopt a formal ordinance formally establishing the tourism promotion area, including the language within the notice of intention as to what the uh, particular parties want. And so this is a particular ordinance, which is the second public hearing item, which you have in front of you. And Mr. Valencia, if I can go back to the public hearing on item number two, thank you for uh, showing the ordinance itself. This ordinance is very similar to the present ordinance we sell. And the reason that's important is because the Department of Revenue administers this ordinance and we didn't want to shock them by a lot of different language. So when Mr. Piccolo and I put together this ordinance, we tried to keep in place the language that's presently in our ordinance that we have. There we go. So with regard to item number two, the public hearing on the ordinance, I won't spend time on that. Uh, what I've tried to do in this overhead board members is simply indicate what is in the ordinance. We've talked about that previously. One, establish the TPA with an effective date with the boundaries. Two, talk about the special assessments. And Mr. Valencia, if I could uh, really go to the next slide. We talked about this before, how much they want us to impose. Next slide, please. This simply indicates the particular zone, what uh, that zone encompasses. Zone A, city of Spokane only. Zone B, unincorporated area only. Zone C, less than $500,000 a year. And then zone D, these are specifically exempt by the statute. And that language in zone D is copied from the RCW. Next thing, three, establishes the five-member hotel motel TPA commission, which we've talked about. Number four, uh, provides for the disestablishment of the new TPA. And what I've done, board members, is I've copied into our ordinance the language under the state statute that provides a mechanism to disorganize a, a TPA. Um, number five, it authorizes the chair to execute at other than an open meeting agreement with the Department of uh, revenue because they were responsible for administering this. And number six, it pro provides for enforcement. So those are the, the language in the ordinance itself. Finally, item number four, and the chair is giving me the look. And number it's number three on the overhead, but I think it's, is it number four on the agenda, Madam Chair? So as I said before, the first thing the board holds a public hearing on the notice of intent. If they adopt the notice of intent, then they hold a public hearing on the ordinance. If they adopt the ordinance, then 
they must sign an interlocal agreement with the city of Spokane, where they agree to participate in the TPA based upon the agreement and the ordinance. And Mr. Piccolo is here and he will confirm that last night the city council uh, executed this at their particular meeting. So, Madam Chair, I'm sorry that took so long. I'm now gonna turn the matter back to the board and ask us if to go back to 3A and make it a public hearing and then make a decision after that, then 3B and then four. Commissioner French. So, anybody that listened to all that and doesn't think we have fun, I'm just saying. So, um, two, 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 uh, questions for you. Well, I guess really more two statements. Uh, one, this, what we're doing to this afternoon is replacing a tax that was already in existence. So we're not creating a new tax. What we're doing is we're replacing one that was already in existence. We're just changing the nature of who the participants are. Is that a fair statement? A correct statement, except it's an assessment, not a tax in the law. Make it, but that's your Thank question. You. You're correct, Commissioner French. It's an assessment. And it is a self-imposed assessment. Uh, so we are not imposing this on the hotel motel community. They are asking that we uh, create this structure so that they can um, uh, acquire the, the promotional dollars necessary to promote their product. Commissioner French, that's a correct statement. 78.8% are telling us, please move forward. Any other questions from members of the board? Madam Chair. Um, so with the 78.8% that I'm seeing here, or 78.7%, um, we're I know once you get over 60%, you, you don't have to go and continue to ask more hoteliers. Um, did you hit 100% of the hotels uh, groups? You, you know, Madam Chair, we had actually several people doing that and, and answer that question. I wonder if I could have Marie Dodro come up or, or, or Meg Westchester and then maybe answer that question. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good afternoon, Commissioners. We um, probably got to about 95% of them. There just were some that were on vacation that were not available. We couldn't get to the right person, but we're able to. There were a couple that chose not to sign it, knowing that it would probably still go forward, but we attempted to talk to everyone. And then Maureen did the due diligence of sending out the notices as soon as we moved forward. So everybody is aware of it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll turn it back over to you now. Thank you, Commissioner Mr. French. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Macho. We appreciate seeing you when we have the opportunity. So great job. Um, so with that though, then that will take us to item number 3A, which is a public hearing today. I'm getting a little feedback. Um, so I will open up the public hearing for item number 3A, which is in the matter of adopting a resolution of intention to establish a tourism promotion area having certain boundaries and other matters related thereto. So first call for one in wishing to testify. I have somebody online. Okay, so Dan Zimmer, er, it looks like you have your hand up and we'll go ahead and start with you. Uh, hello, uh, good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, I represent the Davenport Hotels, but I also am on the TPA commission board. Uh, as well as on the sports committee, Spokane Sports Board, who is one of the uh, recipients of the funding. Um, and not to date myself, but I was part of the group in 2003 that so self-imposed this fee um, just to try to figure out how can we market our our um, our area and and our hotels, but but the greater Spokane area too, and uh, bring visitors in. And tourism is such a big part of. Um, what makes us successful and uh, and so many other touches so many other businesses. Um, I, 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 on behalf of the Davenport Hotels and the other uh, functions that I, uh, capacities that I listed, I am fully in support of, of continuing this TPA uh, assessment and, uh, and, and am eager and willing to continue to participate in um, how it's distributed and how it's um, uh, used with the marketing agencies of uh, Visit Spokane and the Spokane Sports. Um, um, one, one thing on in addition to that, we also set aside money and we 
use that as seed money for new events to come into Spokane. So we try to help certain events, you know, as many events as we can uh, touch, uh, get off the ground and get their events started and um, hopefully, you know, become bigger and better over time. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much. Um, second call for anyone wishing to testify on item number 3A. Third and final call for anyone wishing to testify on item number 3A. I will close the public hearing. Seeing none, I will close the public hearing and look to my fellow commissioners. Madam Chair, I would move to approve the resolution of intention to establish a tourism promotion area, having certain boundaries and other matters related thereto, as set forth in Spokane County Resolution number 22-0567, as well as the execution of a decision uh, to that effect. I will second the motion. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. That will take us to item number 3B, which is a public hearing in the matter of an ordinance establishing a tour and tourism promotion area, having certain boundaries and other matters related thereto. I will open up the open public testimony. First call for anyone wishing to testify. Second call. I'm looking, seeing no one in the audience and no one online. Third and final call for anyone wishing to testify. Seeing none, then I will close the open public hearing and look to my fellow commissioners. Madam Chair, I move to adopt the ordinance, which was the subject of the public hearing and advertised under resolution number 22-0568, entitled an ordinance of the Board of County Commissioners of Spokane County, Washington, establishing a tourism promotion area within the unincorporated area of Spokane County and the city of Spokane, imposing a charge on the furnishing of lodging by a lodging business located in the tourism promotion area, providing for the collection of the charge, providing for the administration of the charge and other matters related thereto. I will second the motion. Okay, I have a motion and a second for item number 3B on today's agenda. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Then that will take us to item number four. And I will look to my fellow commissioners. Uh, we have to take testimony on this? No, this is just a resolution. Oh, okay. So Madam Chair, I move to approve execution by the board of that document entitled Interlocal Cooperation Act Agreement for Establishment of Spokane County Tourism Promotion Area, wherein under certain terms and conditions, Spokane County and the city of Spokane will set forth the terms and conditions under which they form a tourism promotion area provided for in chapter 35.101 RCW to include the boundaries of the city of Spokane County, city of Spokane and Spokane County and the unincorporated area of Spokane County. I will second the motion. Okay, I have a motion and a second for item number four, which is the resolution that was just stated. <laughs> I'm not gonna restate. Uh, all those, uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. I know that that's a lot. Uh, Mr. Amesha, I appreciate it. Uh, Meg and, and Visit Spokane, I know you guys have worked hard on this, so uh, great job. And you have your tours promotion area. Okay. That will now take us to item number 5A. So the next several items, I've got 5A, B, C, D, and E that are all public hearings. We will start with item number 5A, which I believe Monty Chamberlain is gonna come up and speak to us. Good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, Monty Chamberlain with Public Works. I'm pinch hitting for the county engineer who is on vacation. So um, 
the matters, I'm going to give an overall uh, background on the three that I'm going to present because uh, they all kind of go together into um, resolving the finishing of our project of the Bigelow Gulch Corridor on the eastern end. Um, if you go to the next slide, please, Ron. So we knew that we would be uh, having to face the naming of the roads, especially with the creation of this new alignment of Bigelow Gulch Road with the dark blue there. And so we had some meetings um, to discuss options, what to do with Forker, what to do with progress and such. We met with emergency services, um, fire district, city of Spokane Valley. We went through a lot of different scenarios. Um, we eventually brought it down to a few and then we did send them out to affected property owners to get their feedback on the different pieces. And this was uh, the scenario that we came up with that is our preferred option for it is actually probably the simplest one of the ones that we considered. And um, it is made up of uh, three components. The dark blue is the establishment of the new portion of uh, that we're just finishing the completion of that construction right now. The um, yellow at the top is actually the Forker intersection, which we completed back in 2018, just establishing that piece. And then the light blue is renaming what was Forker coming down the hill uh, into renaming that to Bigelow Gulch. So to explain some of the principles behind this, um, some of our road standards um, that were road naming standards that we have is that a contiguous road keeps the same name all the way through. Uh, so that's something that's a preferred uh, setup for us that if you're not turning off on an intersection to leave a road that the road name stays the same. And then the emergency services uh, interaction was really to make sure we did not create any intersections that were confusing with their names with the way the names came together that they created duplicates or confusion that was their main uh, is to not create if something's called 911, that there's a, a confusing portion to that. So we went through all of that and came up with this as our preferred option, because it does meet uh, what we would pref prefer for the contiguous roadway. And it, it ends there at the city of Spokane Valley. And then it's uh, just inside the city of Spokane Valley, it intersects with Sullivan Lane, just inside and that will be Sullivan from there on down to Wellesley. But that's that jurisdiction's uh, role to name it. Um, so the, uh, the timing of this was because when we road, the road is open and the road, uh, construction is finished, we like to have the signs in place if this is the option we go with so that the names are on the roads to begin with. And then um, the other part, if you can go to the next slide, Ron, the impact of making these changes is that we have some properties that will have address changes. Some, or on Forker that will get changed and there's others. A total of 10 properties, two of which actually are owned by Spokane County. Um, and so obviously that is one of the impacts to it. It's a disruption, it's kind of a burden to those property owners. Uh, we do believe that in the long-term regional, that this is the best uh, option that we end up with if the board goes with that. And so uh, these are broken up into the three pieces that I described earlier. There's establishment of Bigelow, establishment of Forker, and then the road name change. We'd go through each one of those in order. We have any questions before I jump in? Okay, so next slide, please, Ron. So this is the proposed establishment for Bigelow Gulch Road. I have the county engineer's report, which he wrote before he went on vacation. Just repeat that. Um, the identified roads have been examined by the Spokane County Public Works to determine if they should be recommended for establishment as county roads in accordance with RCW 3681. This examination has found that the roadways are necessary to provide access to the platted lots. They have the proper endpoints, general alignment, and right of way that has been established by survey. The roadways have been designed, constructed, and certified to meet county standards. With this consideration, I recommend that the Board of Community Commissioners establish these, this roadway. Do you have any questions? I don't see any further questions. Okay, so this is a public hearing item. So I will open up public hearing for item number 5A, which is to consider the establishment of Bigelow Gulch Road, County Engineers Road File number 3760 and 2366 for the Spokane County Public Works Department. Anyone wishing to testify? And please, if you're on the phone, star nine. If you're on Zoom, raise your hand. Second call for anyone wishing to testify on item number 5A. 
Seeing none, third and final call, I will close the public testimony and look to my fellow commissioners. Madam Chair, I would move that we accept the recommendation of County Engineer uh, and the consideration of establishment of Bigelow Gulch Road, County Engineer's road file numbers 3760 and 2366 for the Spokane County Public Works Department. I will second the motion. Okay, I have a motion and a second for item number 5A. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. That will take us to item number 5B. Yeah, so this is the establishment of Porker Road, and I'll read the county engineer's report. The identified road has been examined by Spokane County Public Works to determine if it should be recommended for establishment as county road in accordance with RCW 3681. This examination has found that the roadway is necessary to provide access to the platted lots. It has the proper endpoints, general alignment, and right-of-way that has been established by survey. The road has been designed, constructed, and certified to meet county standards. With this consideration, I recommend that the Board of County Commissioners establish this roadway. Any questions? Good. <laughs> You're doing such a great job, Monty. <laughs> um, okay, this is a public hearing item. So this is item number 5A to consider the establishment of Forker Road, County Engineer's Road File number 2366 for the Spokane County, uh, for the Spokane County Public Works Department. I will open the public testimony. First call for anyone, anyone wishing to testify. See none. Second call for anyone wishing to testify. Third and final call for an, anyone wishing to testify. I will now close the public testimony and look to my fellow commissioners. Madam Chair, I would move that we accept the recommendation of a county engineer uh, in the consideration of establishment of Forker Road, County Engineer's Road File Number 2366 for the Spokane County Public Works Department. I'll well, second the motion. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, this is for item number 5B. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. That will take us to item number 5C. 5C is the uh, renaming of what was the basically alignment of Forker Road uh, to renaming it to Bigelow Gulch Road. I mean, <laughs> we don't have a report on that one. I was going to say, no, no report from the county engineer. It's not, required by, it's not required by RCW, so I guess not. <laughs> okay. Any other questions for Monty? <laughs> no. Okay, this is a public hearing item, so I will open up the public hearing for item number 5C to consider the road name change, Forker Road to Bigelow Gulch Road, County Engineer's Road File Number 3760 and 2366 for Spokane County Public Works Department. First call for anyone wishing to testify. It's not seen anyone. Uh, second call for anyone wishing to testify. Third and final call for anyone wishing to testify. Seeing none, I will close the public hearing and look to my fellow commissioners. Madam Chair, I would uh, move that we accept the recommendation of the county engineer uh, in the consideration of a road name change for Forker Road to Bigelow Gulch Road County Engineer's Road File Number 3760 and 2366 for the Spokane County Public Works Department. I will second that motion. I have a motion and second for item number 5C. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. That will then take us to public hearing item number 5D, and I believe we have Mike Duke coming up. Good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, Mike Duke, uh, Bridge Program Manager, Spoken Public Works. Um, this is for the recommended addition of load limits on the Barnes Road Bridge 3622. And this particular structure is located north of Country Homes, east of Wall, um, and Analysis has indicated that the bridge was never designed to carry the current legal loads that we are required to evaluate them for, and therefore recommending that several of the legal loads be imposed load limits, particularly the uh, dump truck style vehicles, large single units. 
Any questions for Mr. Duke? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so with that, then um, this is a public hearing item. So I will open up the public testimony for item number 5D to consider revising Spokane County traffic code number 46.44.041 to add load limits on Barnes Road Bridge, bridge number 3622 for the Spokane County Public Works Department. First call for anyone wishing to testify. Second call for anyone wishing to testify. Seeing no one online or in the audience, third and final call for any, anyone wishing to testify. I will then close the public testimony and look to my fellow commissioners. Madam Chair, I would move that we accept the recommendation of the county engineer in, in considering revising Spokane County Traffic Code number 46.44.041 and add load limits on Barnes Road Bridge, bridge number 3622 for the Spokane County Public Works Department. I will second the motion. I have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. That will then take us to item number 5E in the matter of confirming the base assessment maps for flood control and water quality in conjunction with the zero ratio of benefits, uh, number of classes, degree of benefit of Newman Lake Flood Control Zone District for the Spokane County Public Works Department, and Ben Bradabo. Yeah, thank you, commissioners. Um, appreciate the opportunity to present to this. Uh, so I'll have a short slideshow and then um, be available for answering questions. And uh, staff is here to answer questions that might come up during the public hearing. So we'll go through these slides. Um, this is a bit of background about this process and, and Spokane County hired a board of appraisers to review uh, the way that the assessments are, are applied or in the Newman Lake Flood Control Zone District. And it's it's been an extensive process, but this formal process was, um, with the Board of Appraisers was the first public meeting about a year ago, almost exactly a year ago, um, 18 meetings, uh, opportunities for written comment and public comment during those meetings. Um, and then the results of those were to um, remove split parcels. This was a was a uh, an allowance that was previously allowed, previously allowed that would allow parcels to have a reduced assessment um, by splitting off an area that was further from the lake. And these results are all of the the summary of the a board of appraisers findings. So their, their recommendation was provided to you. And then this public hearing is an opportunity for people to, to provide feedback on those findings. Um, the second one on the result side is uh, they changed the benefit classifications a, a bit and that um, have a, information on the next slide for that. Uh, the third one is the recommendation to use a market value as opposed to a current use. So a market value is uh, an assessed value, but then that assessed value can be reduced by exemptions for open space or forestry. And currently um, we use the current use or so reduced value of those properties, but the Board of Appraisers suggests that a market value, potentially a higher value for, for properties that have uh, an exemption. Um, um, so it would change the valuation that would be assessed. Um, as, as a summary, in this year, there's 761 assessed parcels. And if this was approved, these changes were approved, there would be 803 next year. Um, 123 parcels have a change in their classification. Um, as a summary for the cost, the highest assessment charge increase. So there will be a property out there that pays more, but on average, the assessments will be decreased. It will be spread across a larger air, a larger number of parcels. Um, we're still uh, waiting for a response from the Attorney General's Office about using market value or, or uh, current use, um, but that's not a, a discussion of the at this time. Um, and then the the next steps, and this is where we are today, is the is the public hearing um, that we have. So, next slide. This is a summary, a comparison. If the 
the 2022 assessment, which was which was levied against the properties, and then um, after remapping, and this is still using the current value, so there's a little bit of apples and oranges comparison here, but this is to show you that there at the bottom there's more properties that would receive assessments, um, and then the, the second line from the bottom is that the average assessment charge is reduced because it's spread out over a larger number of properties. Next slide. This is a summary of the, the benefit classifications. This is what the Board of Appraisers used to de decide how properties would be included. So there's the two categories. There's flood control benefits, which properties are all uh, in the flood control zone district are assessed for flood control benefit and then separately assessed for water quality benefits. So each property is assessed under each of these categories and, okay. and um, could be at a different class in each of those categories, depending on where they are. So for example, um, on the flood control benefit, the, the agriculture properties to the south of the lake are receive 100% benefit and they, they're charged 100% of the value of their property um, for tax assessment. Um, alternatively, for the water quality benefits, um, the 100% category is for non-agricultural land on the lake front. And so each, each property is assessed and can be assessed differently in different categories. And so um, next slide. And this is a summary of the of mapping. And so on the left is what we have for this year of how properties are assessed. And on the right is the areas highlighted in red um, that show the change, the, so the, the, the largest change. And so there, um, this is for the flood control benefit. You see on the left side, the blue area, um, on the, on the right-hand figure is, is that's the removal of the split parcels. So that's a change there. Or alternatively on the right-hand side, those are properties that were added uh, for, uh, to be newly assessed. So that's the flood control figure. And then the, the other figure is the, is the next slide, is the water quality figure. And see a, a bit more ch changes on this one, same setup, the current is on the left and the proposed on the right and the properties um, again on that left hand side in the purple area you see the removal of the split parcels the long skinny parcels will be assessed for their full value and then in the upper the northern area of the of the lake is there's the yellow area and those are uh, water quality rehabilitation level 30 percent those were added new um, in those in the northerly portions and then also on the uh, the east side as well so those are the two um, these two figures will be uh, the part of the discussion in public hearing today and will be available to answer questions and we can uh, if people that wish to testify want to zoom in or or, or look more closely and point out where they might be and, and how they sit we're able to do that and uh, and then we have County Legal Council that's participated in in this throughout Reese will be here. And then uh, I believe the majority of the people here are here to provide comment on this. And so a um, couple of options. One would be to, to take them all uh, individually and hear that and make a decision on, on how to uh, potentially adjust the proposed assessment or alternatively is to, is to take them all and make a decision at the end and uh, I'll leave that to you for for the hearing. Any okay. questions? Um, well, I think before well, any questions for Ben? Um, so I do have five people that have signed up to testify. Okay. Are there additional people that want to testify that have not signed up? Okay, we have one. Is there any anybody online that's showing that they want to? Just so we know, kind of numbers of one. Okay, so five, six, seven, it looks like that we probably have. Okay. So with that then, um, I will open it up to public testimony um, for item number 5E on today's agenda in the matter of confirming the base assessment maps for the flood control and water quality in conjunction with the ratio of benefits of Newman Lake Flood Control Zone District for Spokane County Public Works Department. Um, again, just like with all our other public testimony, you have three minutes to testify. Um, please state your name and address for the record when you come up, and I will just call you up in the order that I have them here. Um, so we'll start with Jacqueline Cabral. 
Madam Chair, as the individuals come up to provide testimony, may I ask that after they identify themselves, they identify their particular parcel of property on the overhead map so the board knows exactly where it is. And if they please indicate if they're talking about the water quality map or if they're talking about the, uh, the uh, other map. So we have a better idea of what we're going to be doing. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Mesha. I'll let you help us guide us through this. So. Thank you for hearing me. My name is Jackie Cabrell. And it's the first time I've ever testified in front of a public forum. So excuse me if I get a little bit nervous. My parcel number is 57273.9018. And I don't know how to point out because yeah, I don't see a pointer or anything like that. We start. Can we figure out how to? Okay. We'll get our you'll, technology you'll working. Zoom out because we're way far away from the lake. Yep, that red little square is where I'm at. Okay. And I would like if you would please um, put the map up that looks like this, the water quality map, because I would like to address certain areas. My basic position is I do not agree with the findings of the Board of Assessors and what the recommendations are. A little bit farther, please. Okay. Um, so, and just just so you know, the three minutes is not going to work with the map up. So we'll have Ron do three minutes on his phone as we start. Oh, okay, that's fine. So you won't be able to see that going. Okay, so there are fourteen properties that are up here, and I'm speaking in uh, general. Yeah, I'm I'm speaking in general defense for these properties, specifically for myself and my neighbor, Joni Mitchell, or Joni McKay. And my, we are concerned, we were concerned that we were added to the assessment for water quality because we have no access to the lake. We have to have um, the Washington State uh, Park Pass to use the lake. We don't get water from the lake. We don't have anything to do with the lake. We can't go down to the water unless we pay for it. Um, and now we're being assessed for water quality and it does not make sense. Further, um, there are, when, when we came to the public meeting, which I was not aware of until a neighbor came and knocked on my door, uh, it was one of the very last meetings, if not the last one, um, we said, hey, this does not qualify. We do not qualify because we're too far away and our properties are over the limit. And so the next thing I knew is they changed the classification defini definition for the properties that qualified for uh, being assessed for water quality. Um, there, it was a very uh, significant change in the text in that it used to be here we go. Let's see if I can find my. Here it is. It used to read tertiary lands on a scale of uh, tertiary lots, parcels smaller than 10 acres on the main road circling the lake that are within a half a mile. All 14 of these properties are more than a half a mile away from the lake. And I believe all 14. Uh, at least 13 of them are uh, at least 10 acres or larger. So upon presenting our issue with the classification, um, the next thing I knew they had changed the definition of this classification. And now they're saying it's tertiary lots, tertiary lands on the scale of five to 30 acres plus or minus fronting on a main road or in relative proximity to the lake. So now they've gone smaller and larger, and now they're saying in relative proximity instead of saying a half a mile. So you can see that's significantly different. So what I've done is I've gone through and I have looked at the proposed map compared to the previous map. 
and found several areas, which people who are online won't be able to see this, but you, know, you can see that I've circled several areas in orange here, and I can submit this to you or a photograph of this too, if you like, that are roughly the same description as our property, but they are not being assessed. So to me, this seems unfair. Are you out of time? Okay, I have the, I, my request is a rationale for why our property should be included and they should not be included. I think we should not be included. And Thanks. I would like to have that in a week or two weeks at the latest. Thank you very much. Would you like the list of properties? Um, so the, the piece that you showed that you used as testimony with the, uh, the circles that you had, if you could give that um, to our clerk, the board, or get a copy of that to her so that way we have that for the record. Madam Chair, may I please be sure we summarize this presentation? My understanding is your testimony is the property that you're concerned about, you're concerned about the water quality map only, and you're concerned about the, your particular property. They amended the definition of class number three, 30%. And they amended that definition, and then your property was included in that particular definition. Is that correct? No, that's not correct. Okay, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. So the way you said it, it implied that they changed the definition, then they added our property. They added the property, and then they changed the definition. Yeah. Jim, I yeah, we need to have you step to the microphone so Pardon we can that. hear. I just want to be clear that they added our 14 properties, and then when we complained after that, they changed the classification. And Madam Chair, just to be clear, properties, you said you were speaking on behalf of your property and a neighbor's property, if I understood correctly? I'm speaking on behalf of my property and Joni McKay, Joni and Rob McKay, and I can also speak if um, the Johnsons and Tom Ho, four properties. Okay, I'm going to look to our attorney to see how we do that. I, I, they're here, they can speak, right? Yeah. They intend to speak? Do you intend to speak? You're seeing head nods, shaking yes? Intend to speak? That will capture it there. Okay, and that'll do all except for Joni. And I have a text message that I asked her today if you'd like to see that, if I could speak on her behalf, and she granted that. Okay. Um, I I think the the issue I have is that your three minutes is over. Right. I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to ask our, our legal to figure out how we move forward with testimony um, because you, I mean, we don't have anything that you're speaking on behalf of anyone else oh, so I'm sorry this this just had you speak on behalf of right. yourself I didn't have her parcel number so that's why I didn't it was too small to read all right so it sounds like she's finished then anyway so we're I think we're good to move to the next unless we're going to do each one individually then that's that's going to be the question that's entirely up to you we can certainly if you'd like us to do to to continue this once you've once you've heard all the testimony if you'd like some time to think about it so that you can put your thoughts down to paper and things like that that might be appropriate. Otherwise, you can make the decisions on each one now, if you like, um, or continue to another hearing and, and also make a decision later. Any way you want to go is fine. Mr. Reese, do you have anything else you'd like to add to that? Yes. Okay. Mr. French, do you have a... If you're looking for a recommendation, I'd recommend you hear all the testimony and take it, make a decision after, because that gives you a chance to think about it. But that's okay. just up to me, or that's just my opinion. Thank you. Okay, Mr. French. Uh, Madam Chair, and I would say one thing for the people here. The reason I've indicated I'd like them to identify their parcel is because I think legal counsel are all recommending that the board take action on each presentation. So we need to know exactly what parcel they're speaking about so that we can make a decision if we agree with their uh, protest or not agree, as the case might be. And I also think it's important to remind the board that uh, uh, Mr. Bren Badbo has made a part of this particular public hearing all the testimony which was heard and considered by the appraisers over the time frame that he discussed in his presentation. And, uh, and, and I think, as he alluded to, all those particular meetings were meetings at which the public, I'm advised, were afforded an opportunity to 
participate. And I'm looking at Ben to correct me if I'm not wrong. So I think that's all important as we move forward. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think Mr. Maceo just addressed my concern that for us to take an action, we need to have a parcel number to tie to an action, whether we're either going to accept or reject uh, in the motion. Is that, did I capture that accurately? Uh, Commissioner French, that would be my recommendation to the board as we move okay. forward. Yes, it's similar to the final assessment role hearing where we allow people to protest and then we take action on each one of them approving or denying it. Yes, Commissioner French, you are correct. So then I will look to my fellow commissioners if we want to take testimony on all of them and then make a decision or take them individually. I'm sorry, did you say you wanted to take them? Right, oh, sorry, well, sorry. no, I'm just asking my fellow commissioners if uh, they want to take them individually or if they want to take them as a group and then we, we uh, make the decision, at the, which was your recommendation, but I just want to make sure before I go on to the next one. Well, that, and, and recognizing that it, sometimes it's clearer and easier for yourselves to, as you hear the information, make a decision then. So it's completely fine to do that. Either one is fine. Mr. Mason, do you have something? Sorry. Madam Chair and board members, um, I think Mr. Bradabo is here, and he may very well want to draw to the board's attention matters in the record, which address some of the concerns which the people will be speaking to. And it would be my recommendation that you may want to hear from Mr. Bradabo about what's in the record that may address the concerns that have been raised. And so, as I say, I think it's certain, as we move forward, uh, there may be factual issues that Mr. Bradabo will talk about, and there might be legal issues that Mr. Skerritt can address if those come up. For instance, there are certain presumptions in the state law that apply to the appraisers. These weren't just simply people. These were appraisers. They were MAIs. They went through a selection process, and they have expertise. And I think uh, the board's aware of that. The members of the public are aware of that because the process to select them was open to the public. So then, Mark, if, if, oh, Commissioner French, go ahead. So um, when we take a final action, if we were to take an action, let's say, theoretically, um, on four parcels, then the resolution would have to list each parcel as part of the recommendation, or we take four separate actions on four separate parcels and list the parcels uh, for each action. Those are the options we have available to us. That's right. Okay. And Chairman French, Mr. Skerritt has prepared, it's called an order in this case, not a decision. And expecting that there would be many people here that would have concerns. We have a provision that addresses the particular parcel number. We probably have to add whether it's the water map or the drainage map, and then whether you agreed or disagreed with their protest. Because after hearing all this, you have to issue an order confirming the maps which were recommended to you, addressing changes or not addressing changes. How about we listen to all the testimony and then if there's agreement one way or the other, we can either take them all as one or we can go through one by one, but let's hear all the testimony first. Okay, I, I would agree with that. I just want to make sure that you guys were feeling comfortable with that decision as well. Um, I do uh, want to ask our legal counsel, since we are looking at parcel by parcel, um, with the first person that spoke, having a text, is that appropriate or not appropriate legal? I, I don't um, think we have a known parcel number. I don't think we know what the what the grievance is. So I, right now. Yeah, she she gave us the parcel yeah. number. Then That's how they that. did the lookup for it. It's 572 uh, I'm sorry, that was on hers. That was hers, but not for her neighbor. But... The second parcel was what? 9058. Okay. 
So I guess, Mark, I'm asking if the person is not here, is that sufficient or not? Let me think about it a little bit. I, at this point, I would my preliminary thought would be no, but let me think about it some more while okay. we're doing so I'll, I'll see if I can do some research too. Thank you. Okay, and then I do want to just ask that um, the, the screens are very sensitive, so not to have you get too close to the screens. Um, so thank you very much for that. Um, okay, so the next person I have uh, wishing to testify is Thomas Huff. We have a question, all of us in Newman Lake. What's this gentleman's uh, representation here? He is our, uh, he's a deputy prosecutor. Oh. He's, he's our civil attorney. He's been our civil attorney actually in Spokane County for over 40 years. Okay. And, and... <laughs> we were just wondering, you know, he was suddenly yes. just decided to join us. No. Okay, so for the record, I'm not Thomas Ho, and I'm not Thomas Huff, I'm Thomas Howe. Okay. H-O-W. That's the easiest way to remember that. Okay, thank you. Okay. And then can you give us your parcel number? My parcel number is 57273.9010. Uh, it's on the north end of the lake. It's right there on the road, Thompson Creek at Muzzy. <laughs> I'm also been asked to represent uh, parcel number 57273.9016, who's Kathy's cook. She's sitting back there. Okay. And what were the last four numbers of that parcel? 90016. Thank okay. you. Okay. I submitted to you about a 14 page document. Uh, I sent it into your clerk and you should add time to read it by now. It was a Newman Lake rebuttal. Did you gentlemen have a chance to see it at all? Yes. Okay. Hope you enjoyed the pictures. I'll cover that. Okay. I believe Dennis Freewinkle is going to cover the, the primary issue, but I want to affirm, I do not believe anybody in Newman Lake should be charging for water quality. If you check within the state, okay, Newman Lake is the only lake the people are getting charged a fee for water quality, okay, that are adjacent to the lake, okay? We have something like 5,000 boater, boaters and fishermen that go onto that lake that aren't residents, use the lake through the public launch, which I believe Spokane County paid for, okay? They didn't pay for that, okay. Okay, but they use the lake, okay? Uh, so as far as I'm concerned, okay, I should be charged nothing and nobody in Newman Lake should be charged. But I'm on the, that group of 14 properties up there, okay, that had the definition change, okay, which made me rather unhappy because the gentleman claimed, okay, on the board of appraisers, okay, that I had a view of the lake. And if you have a view of the lake, you have a large uh, interest in that lake because your property is a higher value. Okay, I went through a complete study in there. Okay, did a sampling of about 75 properties. And what I found was, is it's already accounted for in those people that live on the lake as I did at one time. Okay, their property value per acre is about 20 to 25 times higher than mine. Okay, your own Spokane County appraisers have confirmed, okay, the value of a piece of property on the lake or off the lake is determined by the parcel acreage. Okay, they charge based on the frontage on that lake. Okay, and it runs anywhere from 2000, I think to $2,600. Okay, so as far as I'm concerned, I shouldn't be charged. I gave you a proposal in there. Okay, and I weighted all the items. As I said, I owned a property, I owned a class one property, I owned a class two property, and now I own a class three property, supposedly. View counts for maybe 10% of the total value, which is about what the appraisers 
and the county find when they do their property appraisal analysis. Okay, when you go around that lake, okay, you'll find that he has an arbitrary and capricious method of looking at the classification of uh, group three. Okay, I drove around that lake again. Okay, you have properties on the south end of the lake that have no view, absolutely no view. They're blocked by trees. These gentlemen couldn't have checked it because it's all private driveways up. If you go up on the 14 properties up there, I gave you two pictures. I have a glimpse of the lake. I don't have a view. The person is about six down from me. Okay, if you stand on the road, you can't even see the lake. The ones prior after that are blocked by a mountain. The property is on the west side there, that next yellow district. Okay, they have no view of the lake. Some of the properties go this way. Okay, so if you build a house, you're looking far to the west. You have no view to the east. Okay, and sorry, you. your three minutes is up. I know. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to just summarize it that you would are limited. Okay, uh, next I have Kim Jones. Okay, so you're okay. They'll say that. Uh, yes. So, Dennis, will you have his parcel number when you come down? No, I don't even have my own. Ron can pull it up. He's been there. You can look on for us. Can, can you please, yeah, stay back so it's not there. So to be to to qualify for a protest, we do have we do have to have a parcel number. So well, if, if you we can, can if you can expand it, or Ron can pull up a map, I can point it out for anybody. I think address address is one three six zero four North Peninsula Drive. Um, and I'm, I'm first. I'm going to start with uh, Mr. Jones's, which is one three six two zero North Peninsula Drive. So if we can have his parcel number. Okay. Well, I got the address. Is that yeah, a long stick? Number? Move your move your arrow. That would be Kim's property that you have the dot on. Yes, I need I need his to start. Okay, um, that's okay. So we have the address, we can get the parcel number then. And then um, we have, Mr. Your, if, yours if you'll come down Dennis. five lots, you can get the parcel number online if you don't. So you're that. 13604 North yes. Peninsula. Yes. And then Mr. Kim is 13620 North Peninsula. Okay, thank you. We will start the timer. Okay, well, Commissioner French, it's been just over seven years since we sat in the same room and started this minor task to try to ask your help. Um, it's been four years since we gave you a petition to take action on this. Um, but the community members that brought this to you seven years ago have learned a lot in the last seven years. After operating for 24 years under your management, the flood control zone district had never even monitored the performance of the equipment that controls our water quality. When we observed their maintenance on the equipment in 2016 and pointed that out, you promptly fixed it and started monitoring it. And then you banned the community members from watching you do maintenance on our equipment. Community members also discovered in 2016 that you never even knew the cause of the discrepancies in these appraisals until the community pointed it out. You thought it was the 17 Witherspoon properties for the entire history in 2016. It was pointed out that it's 65 properties that were split. With the exceptions of a few parcels that are being adjusted today, the results of this study are almost negligible. Some people are being brought up in line because they haven't been in line forever. Some people are being brought down because they were overpaying. 
um, but it has little effect. And it could have been done by a decision of this rather than of this group, rather than spending $160,000. The community has emphasized during this study the strict conformance with RCW 86. Yet RCW 86 requires that you audit the assess assessment rule every three years and you've never done it. That was pointed out when we found that there were people on the assessment rule that were charged an assessment for years and not caught by the district. We applauded Commissioner Kearns for having his staff um, work with us early on and explain the, our concerns and problems with him. However, you have since chosen no longer to speak to the community members that brought this problem to you. You've uh, chose to work with the community leader and her adjustment in assessments is going up about $1,300 to be fair and equitable because she's being adjusted and that's who you choose for an interface. More recently, Jacobs Engineering was hired and told you and found that the aerator that we use in our lake to support the water quality doesn't work and has never worked. We talked to Dr. Spies, who supported that theory since he's 30 years smarter than he was when we put the first Spies cone in this lake in the world, an experimental um, unit. Um, the bottom line, people, is this BOA membership proposal you have in front of you now is about as far as you, the county, are gonna let it go. Um, and it has very little effect. You need to approve this proposal with the adjustments as these people are presenting. I'm not defending any single parcel. And you need to end this portion of the charade. We're getting nowhere. Regardless of your, of your vote here today, whether you add a few, take a few away or whatever, the community still has a flood control district that does not include the people who get flooded in a flood. And you still are taxing 6, 761 or 803, pick a number of us for living next to a lake for the water quality of a 1200 acre public lake to keep it safe for human recreation. And Fish and Wildlife already has surveys out that tell you that I believe 7,000 people or something visit that lake each month in the summer to recreate on it. This doesn't end this. The, the result of this study here today has very little impact. For most of it, it'll be a $5, $10 swing. Anything that we would have got marked off due to the decision of the current BOA was just increased when the um, advisory board raised our assessments 26% this year. Um, independent of the fact that Spokane County has done a poor job of managing this district since it, since it was began in 68, it is actually time to dissolve the district. The flood control district should be reformed if the community so chose, and you should include the people who are actually flooded. The assessment would be small, probably the highest assessment would be $150 or something if you spread it out in line with the study you've just done and included the people that get flooded. For water quality, that's the county's problem, not ours. We already pay the taxes that, that fund it. The county should be doing this. We, the people who live on or near or overlooking the lake should not be paying this, okay? Has it changed much in seven years? Has it, uh, Mr. French? I don't think so. Other than we've become much more aware of the quality of the management of the district. I appreciate your time. Any questions on anything I've said or that I've sent you? I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next I have, I'm gonna not uh, hopefully say this right, Mel, Melvina? Melvina. Melvina? Treadway? And I guess to help, I've, I've got an address, uh, 10811 North McCoy Road. Right. Zero. I don't. We'll, we'll make sure that we get that the parcel pulled up first. And I just want to make sure I'm correct. 10811 North McCoy Road. Correct. Okay. Correct. And then I'll have you state your the proper way to say your name. <laughs> I am Melvina Treadway. Thank I you. live off of McCoy Road, and I chose to speak because 
in enmity to you, I got no information. None. Got this. It says, come to a hearing. This is the first and only piece I have received. Everyone on McCoy Road, this is the first and only piece we have received. And I propose you hold off on this meeting until everybody has been notified and brought up to date what this is about. Because frankly, I have no clue. Would you like to explain it to me? Would you? I have no clue. We weren't at any of the 18 meetings because we received nothing on it. We don't even know what these are about. Classification, what reclassification? Flag control, yeah. What did you do? Have no clue, no information, nothing. McCoy Road, nothing, no information, nothing. We got this right here. In the past, whenever anything was done with Numa Lake or that area, we received in writing a packet of what was presented and why. Information. have received nothing, just this. This is not fair. If McCoy Road has been reclassified in any way, according to the flood zone, uh, according to the uh, market value or interested or the current use value for whatever reason, for whatever, which I do not understand. I do not have any information on. I have nothing, absolutely nothing. I would sure like to know. And so would the residents on my road. Nothing. So I really do ask you as commissioners for all of Spokane County, including McCoy Road, to please hold off on any decision on E until we receive a packet of information that explains to us what these people have done. And thank you for listening to me. And yes, I'm a bit upset. Am I involved? Is my property included? I don't know. Thank you. And neither does anybody else. Um, Gina, is there a way to get a photocopy of that so we can have that for the record? How you do we that? have not any of these meetings they're talking about, these 15, 18, 20 meetings. We have not been notified, not even once. Okay, thank you. Appreciate your testimony. You. We'll, we'll get a copy of that and we'll get that back to you. Thank you. So that way we have that for the record. Thank you. Okay, the next person that I have is Al Balkan. And I'm gonna say the address just to help pull it up. Um, Sorry, I'm just trying to get the, you, you can state your app. Can I give another one? Oh, oh sure. So can you bring up the north end of the lake on the map? So, okay, so are you Al? I'm Al. Okay. Let's see. And so your address is 14428 North Mesa. That's close to the my parcel. That's my parents' address, actually. But. Okay, and then I guess the second one that this is my sister. Okay, so the, um, is she here today? Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 
Okay, you're gonna come up after. Okay, perfect. So my parcel number, the I've got five parcels there, but one of them is five six zero three one point nine zero zero one. And that's the hash one. Five six zero three one point nine zero zero one. Yeah. This is the parcel. Yeah, and then I've got four parcels up above it that East Newman Lake Drive went through, and so they really aren't usable, and they're included in the designated forest property. Anyway. Um, First, I want to comment on the Board of Appraisers. I kind of think the tasks involved here exceeded their competencies. Um, they operated on the original benefit criteria through almost all of their efforts and did not come up with the new ones until the second to, to their second to last meeting after they realized that um, the parcels that they were trying to put in and had colored the map, didn't meet the criteria. So for example, mine is 80 acres. It's outside of their five to 30. They didn't consider the boundaries of the floodplain in, in, in assessing, or, yes, assessing the, uh, which properties should be included in flood control benefits. And you know, I have to designate the forest I don't receive any water quality benefits. I mean, I have no benefits, so I don't know why I'm being included in that or the floodplain. My property is outside the floodplain, so I don't have any benefits from flood control. And as far as the other parcels that my family has, there's the yellow ones up above. I mean, all the properties, on the north end do not have any benefit of flood control. They, you know, it's more likely that they're gonna get flooded more trying to control the water for the, you know, flood below, the flooding land below, like down around McCoy. So, I mean, I, I just think that, I mean, what the tasks involved exceeded their competency. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. So then I think you said, so Juanita Richardson is, and that's parcel number 57356.9012. 500. Yep. It's not, it's not one of them. I'm going to just direct, direct into where your parcel is. Um, can you move the map down a bit? It's, can I go point? Okay. And just don't go to, yeah, 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 we got it there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we can go ahead and have you start. Okay. Just, I, just okay. state your name so, for the record. Oh, um, Thank you. Juanita Richardson. Thank you. And on the yellow thing, um, I guess I need to state that I oppose how they're assessing this. Um, this is uh, it's 30 acres. It's designated forest. It has no access to the lake. If I want to go use the lake, I have to do like any other citizen in Washington state. I have to go to the public access or I have to ask a private citizen can I use your property to get to the lake? And um, I'm one of the people that I feel the new classifications were changed so that they could include, you know, my property as well. I was rated at many different, different ratings throughout this thing and throughout this process. And then um, I've now ended up at uh, apparently 
classification four for water quality, which says agricultural glands, which I'm designated forest. And um, I feel that the Board of Appraisers have changed what the benefits that we get from our flood control district. I do not feel the Board of Appraisers job was to say what um, our district, our flood, our Newman Lake flood control district uh, does for us. They've changed it. I do not believe our, we should be paying any assessment for the flood control zone district for the smell of the lake. I don't think they can control that. I don't think we should be paying any assessments on that. They cannot, uh, the flood control zone district cannot stabilize my property values. Mm -hmm. um, they cannot change my proximity to the lake. And then they say, oh, well, um, you have, we should have water quality assessment because of highest and best use. They never set foot on my property to see what I can even do with my property. Um, part of it's swampy, can't build on it. Part of it's too steep. Part of it has streams with riparian zones. They have no idea what my property is. You know, is. And so I don't understand how they can assess my property for water quality. Um, I just, I totally oppose it. And I do not, I feel that the benefit classifications that they have rewritten were changed so that the properties they felt should be in this um, um, new, uh, whatever you call this map, this benefit zone map or whatever. I feel they've changed that and quite often, if you go back and listen to the recordings, when people would ask, why do you feel that? They'll say, we just felt it was right. You know, it was in our gut, whatever. I'm sorry, you can't do that. You need to have some concrete reasons for why you're assessing people's property. And I'm totally against it. Thank you. Okay, that takes us to the end of the people that I had uh, yellow sheets for that uh, wanted to testify. So I'm going to see if there is anyone that uh, still would like to testify, if there's anyone online, because we haven't checked online. There is someone. Okay. Okay, I have Hannah Sims. Hello, good afternoon. Um, I have, can, can you state your, um, I, we, we've got your name as Hannah Sims, but can you st uh, give us your address for the record? Yes, and then I was about to do that. Um, I, I can give you my parcel numbers first and then I'll give you my address. I have two parcel numbers. It's first one is 56142.9074. And the second is 56142. 0.9075. And my address is, um, uh, sorry, 10909 uh, Northwest Newman Lake Drive. And I'm mostly just wanting to speak out because I also received the little postcard. And until joining in on this uh, meeting today, I had no clue what this was about. So I'm learning uh, as much information I can from listening to everyone speak. And um, I, my property, I guess, is mostly just impacted by the water quality, but I'm not sure exactly what that means yet. I'm still learning and trying to understand what this new benefit means, as I was not um, mailed any information regarding this. Uh, my property is on a conservation easement. Um, on the east side of the road, both of those parcels are on the federal government's uh, conservation easement. And then it is the left side is not, but mostly I'm just stating that I don't really know much about anything that is happening today. And I would really appreciate to have some more information as a citizen to be able to participate in events like this and, and state an opinion if I need to. 
Thank you very much for your testimony. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna ask for anyone else wishing to testify. Um, Ron, you're shaking your head, so we've got somebody else online. Hello, good afternoon. Okay, can you state your name and address for the record? Yes, Chantel Falcom, and my parcel number is 57353.9007. Can we get the address from you as well? Uh, North 14428 Muzzy Road. Okay, you can go ahead and start your testimony. You have three minutes. And my mom's parcel is across the street as well. At first, um, I would like to respectfully request the commissioners absolutely do not accept the recommendation of the Spokane County of Appraisers. This has been a debauchery since the beginning. I have been on most of the meetings. Uh, my family and parents have lived out at Newman for over 50 years. Um, when the flood control or when the benefit classifications were originally put in place with the five different levels, there was a tremendous amount of research that went into that as far as WSU, uh, research teams, Department of Ecology, engineers, the three appraisers have no knowledge, no expertise on any of this, <laughs> or like I, many people have said, they're they're assessing a benefit on parcels that aren't even in the floodplain or that have a view that aren't even on the lake for water quality. We don't even have access to the lake. I have zero access to the lake, just like many other people have already stated. I don't even believe the board of appraisers have the right to reassess the actual classifications that should be in a board decision by the Newman Lake Flood Control. Um, I'm not sure if we're supposed to comment on this or whatnot, but in addition to levying um, the tax, obviously on assessed valuations or market value, um, regardless of what the AG, the Attorney General's opinion is or not, Know, it's just um, is is just. I mean, the recommendation is. Comp I've never heard of a tax being levied on market value if they're in a special classification. Um, basically, some benefits assessments have. I mean, the to use the land value on the basis of its current use not its highest and best use. And some assessments are removed from assessing egg and forest, such as the, um, oh, whoops, sorry, I'm reading the wrong thing. Sorry, very prepared today. Basically by assessing it on the market value, it violates our right to the special use classifications. I think that's really all I have to say. Okay, thank you very much for your testimony. Okay, I'm gonna see again if I have anyone else wishing to testify. Okay, and I'm not seeing anyone else on, online. I'm not seeing anyone else come forward. Uh, third and final call for anyone wishing to testify on item number, I gotta get back to my, my list here, 5E. Seeing none, I am going to close the public testimony at this time. So then I'm gonna, I guess we need to decide if we're going to uh, uh, look at this all together today or continue this uh, hearing. Well, I... Um... <clears throat> I, I would, um, 
like to request that we continue this item uh, for two weeks so that um, we can give staff an opportunity to respond to some of the issues that have been raised um, before I take a final action. Um, I, I think some statements have been made that I would like to get clarification on uh, and, and verify um, before I feel comfortable taking an action. So uh, that, that's my request. I don't know what my fellow commissioners would like to do. Okay, I, I would say the same thing. I, I think there's enough information that's come forward that I just want to get clarification and understand. Uh, excuse me, sir, we have closed the public testimony at this time. So we will then, uh, I think, you know, two weeks, I think is okay with me um, for us to get back to. Um, so we will continue this public hearing uh, for two weeks. Uh, I believe, Mark, at this point, we will not have a public hearing again when we, we will just be coming back to make a decision. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. So, so in your language, you said you will continue the public hearing. We don't want to continue the public hearing. We want to continue the item for decision making. Okay. So that we don't leave anybody with the, the idea that we're going to take more testimony. Thank you for the You're clarification. Welcome. So that would uh, mean uh, the the clerk has provided me with a note. Uh, we would uh, defer this action to uh, September twenty seventh at our two p.m. Uh, consent or two two p.m. legislative session. Okay. Yep. I will second that motion. Okay, I've got a motion and a second to continue um, until September 27th at two o'clock for at our legislative meeting. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Okay, so we have one more. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> I, 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 I didn't know whether you were. Yeah. I'm going to remind you. I, yeah, no. So uh, and, and you, you, you can ask a question after the meeting. You can you can, you can ask. So so we will. Um, you can ask that question of Mr. Bradabo um, at the end of this after the meeting's over um, because we are we have, as as you heard we're directing staff to get further clarification for us for us to make a de final decision in two weeks. Um, I do need to continue the meeting because I think we both, we all have other meetings at, starting at four o'clock that we need to get to. Um, so I do appreciate everyone who was here to testify. Um, today was kind of a long meeting. Um, so we do have one by lead item on today's agenda. That by leave item is a resolution to award, uh, resolution number, it's item number six, a resolution to award the bid to Inland Infrastructure LLC for improvement of Country Homes Boulevard from Wall Street to Division Street, Country Road Project Number Three Two Nine One. Since this is a by leave item, we do need to open it up for public comment. So I will open it up uh, before we take action for anyone wishing to make a public comment on resolute by leave item number six. First call for anyone wishing to testify. Second call. Seeing none. Third and final call for anyone wishing to testify on by leave item number six. I will close the public comment and look to my fellow commissioners. Madam Chair, I would move that um, we um, approve the awarding of a bid to Inland Infrastructure LLC for improvement of Country Homes Boulevard from Wall Street to Division Street, uh, Country Road Project, County Road Project number 3291. I will second the motion. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those. Uh, uh, Seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Okay, that will conclude our two o'clock uh, legislative action meeting. And thank you all very much for being here.